All right. Welcome back. Is this the final Tulva Tuesday ever? I mean, we don't know that for sure. We do know the NFL draft by the time this comes out. I, what, dude? You're going to college pretty soon. Like, you know, oh, you're not right. going to you're not going to have time for us little people after we you had know. the Shanahan quote about the draft last year about how like none of us could be alive <laughs> next week. I think that same relates to Tulva Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, right. But but it so. has been a while. So let me reintroduce you to everybody again. I'm just some stooge who hits record with a microphone. That is the FB analyst, Bryce Martino, him and I matching Shroot Farms B and B Scranton, Pennsylvania shirts on just purely coincidental. We have our friend who's North of the border and across the pond at the same time. Yes. Harris. We have the man himself, Andrew Tolva, who he's going to talk a lot. So if you do not like Tolva's voice, just, We'll let everybody else go, but you know he's going to give you what you need to know. Just tell me. Uh, the best fill in slash he watches a lot more. And we actually peeled him away from the NBA playoffs for about an hour tonight, so that's good to have. We got Theo Backman back, Ethan Rose back on a non-college basketball podcast for the first time in about a year. Garrett Caldre just like living one of probably for a college freshman, like a top 15, like how they made Van Wilder about Burt Kreischer's life. This man's going to have he, a movie about his college experience in the not after. too distant future. He's in yeah, the high man. You're going yeah. to make me blush, man. You're top tier free agent for sure. Your Instagram makes me cry. Yeah. Th- <laughs> like, I mean, we can't get into it. I mean, we all probably got our own GC scouting reports on him and like, you know. Oh, we do. What he's getting into and out of, (laughs) wink. Uh, But, you know, (laughs) we do have to talk about (laughs) some people that in about, well, I mean, like 48, 60 hours from now, multimillionaires. They are going to make some older men with a lot of money, even more money, and they are going to make them incredibly happy. The NFL draft, of course, basically... How would I explain this to somebody who's never watched football? Imagine the Oscars, but many more tailored suits, much more bad fashion, way longer somehow. There's way more Academy Awards given out, but this somehow takes longer. This is a how many times can we boo Roger Goodell without getting sick of it marathon? This is the best part. This is what we love about uh, off-season football and off-season sports culminating in, well, if we didn't win the draft, then, you know, we're not going to do anything this season. And, you know, basically a really good time to think we know how a 21, 20, 22, 23, however old. uh, Kenny Pickett's like, what, 25 almost? Or one of them? I don't know. Anyways, a lot of judgments are going to be made. And, you know the lead up to it, even more judgments are made. So we're going to get right into it. We were just saying before Jacksonville Jaguars, not that they ever know what they're doing. I I preface it with that, but no idea what they're doing. Not even 48 hours away. And you guys were saying it. And because I'm the dumb one here, I didn't say it, but I'll say it now. The last time I remember it like this was we didn't know the Browns were going to take Miles Garrett to like, four o'clock on draft day that's the only like draft i remember we didn't know guaranteed who was going one probably baker to the browns would have to be the most recent yeah because it was always on on draft day i I feel like it was like that morning around 9 10 a.m yeah with the baker news really well and i think last year was an oddity that we knew it was trevor lawrence since before we knew who had the first pick we were like the first five picks, like three months before the draft started. That was kind of right. nice for making mock draft. Right. Who the Niners were taking at three, that was the mystery. We knew Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson. We don't know anything about this draft. Literally nothing. I mean, if we're talking possibilities at first overall to the Jaguars, I think um, the edge rusher from Georgia, Trayvon Walker, is definitely the pick there. When you look at this draft class, it is not super top heavy and there are no real sure thing, all pro generational prospects. 
at premier positions. So you need to look to the next best thing. And that's people at premier positions who have that ceiling, who have that potential to be a Miles Garrett or a Chase Young. And uh, to me, that's Trayvon Walker. He's a chess piece. He's 270 pounds. He moves like a linebacker, ultra athletic. Um, He's already a polished run defender in my eyes. And he's a smart kid from a very talented defensive line at Georgia this last year. So with pedigree and, and all that in mind, I think Trayvon Walker's the pick. Yeah, I would have to uh, agree. I think Trevor Walker is the pick here. Aiden Hutchinson has been mocked, obviously, here as well. But I see, almost see him as like a – if he adds pounds, he's a DeForest Buckner. But if he loses, he's like a Cam Jordan. I think the upside is just too much to ignore for the Jags at this pick. I I, I think I'm like one of the only people left that I still feel like it's Hutchinson. I, I mean – and, and – I don't know. The more I hear about it, the more I kind of want to lean, but like, I'm going to stick with it. Um, my mock's done, so it's too late anyways. Um, I think it just makes sense. I think the, the upside for Walker is, is higher, but I think Hutchison is a, is a safe pick, and I think Jacksonville is really not going to want to mess up another pick. I mean, their head coach is out there kicking people. Um, they just spent like $5 billion on Christian Kirk. I think they're I think they're going to play it a little safer here and go Hutchinson, something that's obviously been in a lot of mocks, but is slowly starting to become the not favorite as we close in on draft day. Yeah, it's crazy what's even happened in like since the season ended with this Jags first picks. I think initially everyone was thinking Evan Neal or a tackle, and then it kind of switched to Hutchinson. And now it's looking like Tra- Trayvon Walker, who I like before the combine and before all of this offseason stuff was probably like a back half of the first round type of talent that he was it's viewed that. at. Yeah. I mean, it was like, se- around senior bowl when he got second round recognition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe even a second rounder. And then just like the athleticism, the size, I mean, it's tough to pass up. Um, like the Jags have holes anywhere. Like they, they, they really just need to take, I think the biggest swing and go for the guy with the biggest potential. Can I, we're talking about swings and drafts and how they change. And I know he's, he might not go early first round, but Tyler Linderbaum at some point last season was like a top 10 pick, right? Yeah, pretty much fringe at least. I feel like. Okay. That's, that's what I thought. It's the positional value that brings him down. I mean, when you look at center prospects, the last time we had a sure thing, before the draft was Garrett Bradbury, and he was not a sure thing. The center position is very weird. Um, You can find great value in the fourth round, and you can find an an all-pro starter in the fourth round, or you take a top 10 sure thing, perfect player at the position, and it busts. Um, So I think it's safe to say that late first round, maybe definitely early second round is more realistically his range because of the positional value. If he played guard, if he was guard capable, then maybe he's a first round lock, but he's not. He's undersized, 290 pounds. So center only, but great center who I would spend in early second on. Yeah, I, I 100% see him in the early second. And I was high on him uh, throughout the entire process, but I see one of those teams early in the second filling like a hole on that line. I just don't see anywhere in the back that he's going to go. There's going to be too many good players slipping through the cracks for someone to take some, for, for someone to take an undersized guard, really just a center only, like you were saying, Andrew. Um, I see him going in the 34 to 42 range, honestly. Yeah. What is uh, this? I, like I mean, my- to the Giants here. I think he fits well in that offense. Yeah. Like that. Giants at the top of the second would be nice. I, I don't like that for the wrong side of my life. Anyways. This might be a stupid question because I feel like Detroit could just totally mess everything up. Not that Dan Campbell was a bad guy. I still love Dan Campbell with all of my heart. Want nothing but the best for him. But are the Detroit Lions the team that are going to just blow this draft up? Meaning that like they're going to do something that nobody saw coming? Or is it a different team? They have well, that the depends potential. On the it, it depends Taking on who they Malik think Willis. Willis. Yeah. If, if it, it was, depends, if it really Trayvon does. Walker at one, yeah. Because if, if, it's if, if it's Trayvon Walker, Walker at one, at one it's, Hutchinson. It's, it's Hutchinson. If it's Hutchinson at one, it could be literally upwards of five guys. 
I, I mean, think I think even Ahmad Gardner is in that conversation. Yeah. If they took Malik Willis at two, that's the explosion that we're looking for here. But my gut is it really telling me on what the it's KT, one. it's Hutch, it's Ahmad Gardner, and they take a quarterback at 32. So they get that fifth-year yeah. option. I I think the exact same thing. I have Hutchins and KT top two off the board. Yeah, KT going. I would not be mad at KT going two. I honestly, I can't say I'd be too upset at him going number one because he also has a great ceiling and he's more of a prototypical player. I, I like Kayvon Thibodeau. I'm still a big fan of his, but um, he's literally your background. Yeah, I'm just too I, many I, mock drafts have him going out of the top ten. Yeah. I, mean, I just cannot absurd. imagine Malik Willis actually going at two. But if he did, I, there's a gut, a weird gut feeling that I trusted. I want to start. I don't, I don't think this is your trigger. previous Lions regime. Like, I, I actually kind of trust them to build something. Like, John, John Dorsey is a Campbell. smart football person. Yeah. And everything I've seen with Dan Campbell, like, gives the me culture. reason to think that, that that's a guy that's good. Yeah, the, the culture is changing. Mm-hmm. They got really. They think Mal- Malik week. Willis is their guy. Pull the trigger, honestly, at two because quarterback is so valuable. If you are convinced that's your guy, go get him. Well, I honestly, you have to think long. I mean, like obviously the tanking, you know, obviously you're going to say you're not going to do it. But if you're if you think your roster can't compete to get outside of the top ten next year, get build. You know, those get those players of high uh, value at each pick. And I mean, next year's quarterback class the ceiling let them develop. Yeah, exactly. And let golf have a year. And maybe he's the golf that we saw get the Rams in the Super Bowl, but more than likely he's not going to be. And then come in next year with another high pick and get a guy like Stroud, get a guy like Bryce Young, you know, um, something like that. I wouldn't pull the trigger unless you're absolutely sold. I don't think personally I'd be sold on any of these quarterbacks at, num- at number two with all the defensive talent at the top of that board. I think that would just be crazy. Yeah, it just seems like because of a, a multi-draft rebuild. Yeah, like this yeah. Is the, 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 they they will not find their guy right here, and unless they're absolutely convinced they are, there's no point wasting a first-round pick on what a guy who you think might be marginally better than Goff. It's just yeah. not. Uh, all you're doing is costing yourself future draft position at that point. The Seahawks are dumb enough to take a quarterback like Matt Corral, like uh, someone who is not viewed as yeah. the top or one of the top two, like. Desmond Ritter and Malik Willis at nine would make more sense. Those are the first two I expect to be off the board. I, I have a second round grade on Pickett, by the way. I'm not I a big Pickett guy. I don't like him at all. I Yeah, no, I'm not a fan of Pickett, but someone's going to make a mistake. So I think he's still going to go first or second. But like literally, I I just don't think he's that good. At I all. have a disaster waiting to happen grade on Kenny Pickett. Like everything I've watched is that is a, that is a quarterback that has no interest in being in the pocket. Like his first read is like getting outside the pocket. His and he's first just... read is Jordan Addison. Fair enough. Yes. Fair enough. Him, Belinikoff he's winner. Free. But um, he's just I, he's just not fast enough for that to work in the NFL. I don't think there's any consistency with his processing. Like he'll make a good play, but I feel like it more it it was more often than not happening by accident rather than like him having a clear plan. He's just so erratic. I it's it's a lot to build with, and when you're getting someone that's on the like he's not exactly young either. Like he's a fifth yeah, year right. college player. And so for him to be on the upper side of age and needing a lot of development, I just don't see it. Yeah. I really see, hope uh, it's like a smoke screen, honestly. Like if you're, if this guy's a second quarterback off the board, which in my mock draft, I have him just cause I think someone's going to make a mistake. I mean, realistically, if in a perfect world, there'd be five quarterbacks that come off the board before this guy. I mean, yeah, it's a disaster waiting to happen. Who yeah. is, who is y'all's QB one? And well, at least Willis. you would take them. Malik is probably at the Panthers pick. I have That's... someone trading up to four to get him in the, my box. Here's Willis? the thing: is is yeah. I like I, I like Willis, but I feel like so much of a rookie quarterback success is like also dependent on their situation, and he's exactly. not a guy that I would want to put into a horrible situation. Like I, I, that's honestly, why I wouldn't want the Lions to take him. I think. Desmond Ritter is my top quarterback, and I, the earliest I see him going is the teens. Here is why. I am a big-time believer in two traits about quarterbacks. Um, number one is being twitched up, being a twitchy player. 
Um, I think when you process mentally at a twitchy speed and you physically operate at a twitchy speed, um, you are, you just have a step up over every other quarterback prospect, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson. These are twitched up athletes and intellectuals. And when I look at Ritter, that's what I see on the screen. I see a good athlete who has started for four years. And that brings me to the second most important trait, which is the Bill Parcells seven commandments of drafting a quarterback in which Desmond Ritter I believe checks all of those boxes. He was a four-year starter and he got better each season and he took Cincinnati to a playoff and he is a leader of men and he's a dad. So he is mature. He operates well. And it was a very simple offense, but he's a twitched up athlete and a twitched up processor. So I think taking a flyer on a guy like Desmond Ritter in the teens can land you a quarterback that is playing like a top five pick. I just think told me Malik on. Willis is 60 yards, 60 yard bombs in a four, four speed, but his, his mental processing of the game is just not there for me. Yeah. That's how I felt about fields last year too, uh, was the mental processing problem. And I think that's how a lot of things felt as we saw him take that slide um, in favor of guys like Lance and Wilson and Lawrence. And, but I don't think teams have the luxury to let him take that slide because of the other talent. Um, yeah, I like Britter as a prospect. I, I still like Corral as a prospect. Um, I think, Same. though, like, yeah, I think he's the Trayvon Walker of the quarterbacks. He has the potential to, to blow every quarterback in this draft out of the water, or he could just be absolutely awful. So if you're willing to take that chance and let him sit and really believe your system could work for him, I think he's, he's easily worthy of being the top quarterback off the board. Or if you think this system just does not work for him, then – you know, you let him take that slide. I think I don't the, know. Smartest, the smartest thing you could possibly do quarterback-wise in this draft is take Sam Howell in the second. Mm-hmm. I, I, I like that for the Colts. I, the, the Colts have that second-round pick. I think that would be a perfect fit. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think they should do that, though. I, I Listen, I've, I'm a Falcons hater. I'm a Saints fan. I was born to hate them. But, man, I respect the hell out of Matt Ryan. The dude can play still. He, he is a playoff quarterback caliber winning quarterback. And I, I think the Colts need to build around him this year. Next year's the quarterback draft. Save it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But what about I would sitting Howell for Howell. a year, like behind Matt Ryan? I, Sam I, Howell I, for a year would be wonderful. I just think he need he, Sam Howell would be with, right. sitting for two or three years. I mean, Matt Ryan's not that old. Yeah, I mean, he was phenomenal last year. And, and mm-hmm. his offensive line got him killed. Like, he was hit, pressured more than anyone the in the Falcons, league. Man. And he was still pretty solid. And now he's going to the Colts. And now he has Quentin Nelson blocking for him. Like, I think we're getting a good Matt Ryan season. But just what the Colts have been doing for the last four years of changing QBs every year is not it's sustainable. At, so, at some point, they got to get a long-term option in the building. I think no, Matt Ryan, then, two, three years. At a certain point, Frank Frank Reich is going to be gone. And honestly, I love him. I think he's one of the bright spots about the Colts. But when you switch quarterbacks this often, it makes people look bad. And then the fans demand change. Who's going to be the first already on an NFL roster player traded on draft night, if any? James Bradbury. I, I bet they go Stingley at seven. The Giants go Stingley at seven and trade Bradbury. Any chance? I kind of think Stingley could go third. That there, I've seen some of those reports. I don't really likely. buy into that. Stingley's my CB one. Oh, same. Yeah, same man. Yeah. So anyway, why, like, why couldn't he go top five? We're talking about like positional value. Like, what's more valuable well, than a lockdown corner? What he can be is a top three lockdown corner in the NFL, which is absolutely worth the top three pick he just needs to get over his injury battles that he was dealing with last year mm-hmm. yeah that's just such a big question mark for any player but especially a player you're willing to invest a top a top 10 pick into two years I ago mean, he was elite at lsu mm-hmm. he was just shut down yeah I and mean, we haven't got that since i mean we've yeah we've seen it but it's it's uh, it's not we haven't seen it sustained due to his his injury. I and, mean, and it's just it, you can't have a guy who's consistently. A lot of these picks field. are going to be made based on confidence that your coaching staff can develop said player. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, the, the Bills have done that for years. They have bet on their coaching staff over and over again. Yeah. And some teams have success. Um, the Saints trading to 14 in, in 2018 to get Marcus Davenport. You got you got to be sure that you if you're going to give up that much to get a player at a premium position, you can develop them. Mm -hmm. um so yeah it all depends but that's going to be a lot of these players second third round like there are some ridiculously high ceiling players with low floors that you you, you're going to have to bet on yeah i I was just just to add on i think a reason the bills have so much success too is their coach and gm are almost in lockstep like they're from the same carolina tree and i think when you have that working together it significantly reduces the chance of drafting a bust because you have a player that's Mm -hmm. When they have the same vision, the player you're drafting is going to put into the scheme and be used the way that the GM envisioned it. And I think the way that that busts come a lot is that a GM has one vision of a player and he picks him and then the coaching staff uses him totally wrong. I completely agree with that. I, Bill is a prime example. And honestly, like, I felt that way about, like, the Saints in terms of offense for a while before that. And that's what is, as a Saints fan, scares me about this year is that that turnover um that we're that we see we, we've seen it with teams in the past i mean the level of drafting the level of communication it really takes a toll so in a draft class like this where you're betting on ceilings like that it is going to pay dividends to have a good relationship between your gm and your coach and have a plan of what you want to see players like there's going to be teams, there's going to be a lot of head coaches and GMs fired because of poor communication because they were betting on players in this, in this weird draft class. I think, I think it's going to be an interesting domino effect. It is pivotal that you hit yeah. on in a year where there are so few sure things. It is pivotal that you hit. This draft class almost reminds me of 2013 with EJ Manuel and Geno Smith. Yeah, when, when there's, I think when, there's more quarterback talent in this year's draft. But when, there's, when there's a no, lot of talent, there's a lot of high potential, and there's a lot of low floor. When there's no elite quarterback, it just mucks everything up. Yeah, like, it, it does, does, really. Yeah, the well, lack of sort no of defined targets and, and, and picks, guaranteed picks. Like, you know, unicorn at a weird position. There are no none of those. There are Ahmad Gardners who are 6'2 and could be incredible cornerbacks in the NFL. Like, these are the decisions you're going to have to make here. Like, how no far can safe. we realistically see Kayvon fall? Are we buying into eight, like eight some of these the mocks where it is the floor? Where he falls, he falls to 13. To eight. I mean, some of the Falcons are getting a, an absolute star. What are the Giants doing if he falls to eight? Like if he's there at four, the Jets they would have take to him. take him at uh, seven. Yeah, the Jets have to take him at four. In fact, I think yeah, the I Texans at three is likely if he makes it past two. Yeah, well, I think Evan Neal at three makes a lot of sense. But if it I gets see him down going to Thibodeau and at Neal, nine to Seattle, well, if he's on the Evan board Neal, nine, Seattle's going to take a guy we've never heard of. I mean, that's just a <laughs> that's unheard of. Yeah, yeah. like honestly. A lot of people have Charles Cross falling to the teens. That's unbelievable I mean, to me. He's I a top five pick. That what's is your, a, what's your ranking of the three tackles? Cross, what? Aquanu, and Neil. Like, how do you rank those three? Neil, Aquanu, Cross. Same. Yeah. 100%. Neil, Aquanu, Cross, because Neil is he is plug and play top ten. Like his t- has, his technique is just ridiculous, and he's left and right tackle capable. Aquanu because he brings that I'm going to bite your head off attitude to every snap he's guard and tackle capable but he's he's uh he's high floor but super high ceiling so top five pick worthy Charles Cross needs to be a better run defender but he has the athleticism and he is a better pass protector than Equanu and Neil yeah he's a dancing bear like yeah and in every sense he's Toronto Armstead to me I watched his yeah. film, and he is just straight up. He is Teron Armstead. Yeah, that, if he's available at sixteen, New Orleans has to pull the trigger. I Honestly, I have a hunch he's the player that we're eyeing a trade up for because Mickey would. But that depends on how far he falls. Yeah, it depends on when the run of tackle starts. When the run, the runs is going to be the biggest thing in this. Like, runs, run of like wide gonna receiver hit? runs are yeah. going to happen quick. Yeah. When is the they defensive will. end run going to really hit? When is the receiver run going to start? When's the corner run going to start? The I offensive think line run. Garrett Wilson, Drake London, and Jamison Williams are gone after thirteen. Texans, Jets, and and 
commanders. Falcon. I say yeah, Falcons. There's so, I there's such little separation. Drake. There's such little separation between those three players, and even yeah. with uh, Alave in that group too. I, I think yeah, once one goes, I'm not a big Alave fan. I'm I I'm really a huge am not Alave fan. You're polar I, opposites. On I do not love him. I have Traylon Burks higher than him. What scares um, you away from him? He's little, and his film indicates that he's not a big fan of contact. And a lot of so times we look at college Devontae film. Smith. Well, if, if you look at his college film, um, there's a lot of elusiveness with him. He <laughs> does a lot of dancing around corners and defensive backs, and he's a, an elusive, fast, quick player, with, and he's a great route runner. So I th- he's second-round value at least. I think he's a late first that's the grade I think I have on him but in the NFL you have to be physical like you have to be able to go head up with these big physical cornerbacks and safeties that are not going to let you dance around the secondary and it's going to be an adjustment he's six foot and he's in a little frame so if he can add weight I think he'll be incredible but I have other receivers ahead of him this is also a loaded receiver class oh yeah there's guys in this receiver class I think are back half of the time top 10 that should be first in some other classes. I mean, guys like Pickens, uh, I really, really like him. Jahan Dotson. Sky uh, Moore. Arguments. Sky Moore. Oh, is, yeah, Sky bring up. I think and he's an underrated player that could go first round. The one Sky guy Moore's like, crazy. He yeah. could go to the Chiefs. 29-30. I, yeah. yeah, I think we get like seven like first is, round wide receivers. I, I, don't like, I don't like Christian Watson. I, I've heard Packers at 22 or 28. I, I'm not a fan of him. I think he's Close. I think he's behind Pickens and Sky Moore and uh, um, everyone else after that top five. So I have Pickens above Olave. I just I watch Pickens' film and it's just all of his traits are he's top five receiver. Get him he's healthy and he's he's top ten. Yeah. Literally, he's the only thing that like, concerns me about he needs Pickens to mature. is his... yes, yeah, exactly. He needs yeah. to mature and he needs to get healthy, and then he's like top ten, literally. Yeah, it, it sounds like he's gonna slide because he interviewed bad, but like all the star wide receivers are divas. Like Scouts it's just it's saying, part of the position. A wide receiver is a diva position. Like it's in the it's in the resume. Yeah, you're gonna you have know, to deal with it a little bit. But the value of wide receiver contracts are gonna make them fly off the board this year. Get the fifth year option yes. on all of these yeah. young wide receivers. Yeah, yeah. I, I I pointed that out. That's why Pickens is a first round lock to me. Yeah, I like I Ayuk was the twenty fifth pick a couple years ago, just because that's a Bills pick this year. I remember it. He, he's making four point two five million dollars a year on his rookie on his rookie contract. Yeah. And you have Christian Kirk, Mike Williams are now twenty million dollar receivers. If you can I use a back that. first and get a player like around that talent for four million dollars instead of twenty, yeah. like you have to yeah. do that. And the draft's all about yeah. value. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. I was thinking about this in the car today. Like, who is a value player that that is is simple? Like, they you see the superstar potential, and they're just not mocked highly. And it's one thousand percent James Cook to me. Yeah, James Cook James is Cook. Alvin Kamara. He did for 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 Georgia what what Alvin did for Tennessee, and he's a real twitchy dual threat running back. He's 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 going to be crazy. I think James Cook and Zamir White are both fantastic, and I think they're both hurting each other's value because they took some. Well, some they have so much tread on other. the tire, though, because of that. But, yeah, they I know I, they're, they're both very fresh. Like you can give them yeah. t- tons of carries right away. So yeah, I, I like them both a lot. This is a weird they're running back class. Running There's no clear yeah. one. No, I like Brees I, Hall as RB one though. I like so, I like Brees Hall and then Kenneth Walker, I, but I don't think any of them should go in the first round. I don't think I have Spiller go above Walker. I, I, I wish Kenneth Walker could catch no, passes. I think. I mean, maybe there's some hidden yeah, upside like yeah. there was with Najee, but yeah, I've got Spiller as RB two behind Hall and yeah. Walker. I have, I have him RB three. Spiller three. Walker. I, I'm not. I thought Spiller looked too slow on film. Really. Yeah. I think he I think he he reminds me a lot of a little bit more shifty um Jonathan Stewart. He he can catch passes mm-hmm. out the backfield and he can run the ball effectively. I was kind of getting Latavius Murray when I was watching. Yeah. yeah. That too. That I've I've honestly the pick that I just cannot figure out is the Bengals and at this point I would literally bet a lot of money that they're just going to trade back. 
Because teams are going to yeah. try to trade into the first for a fifth year option on a receiver or quarterback, and they're just going to they still need a decent amount of second. positions, though. They need I corner, see, they need corner. interior D line, mm-hmm. and no one yeah. fits the value there. Maybe yeah. carry on Winfrey, maybe Travis Jones, but trade back and get maybe those Kyrie players. Elam. Kyrie, I, I don't gone, think, I think. yeah, corner is not falling to them. I don't mm-hmm. think, I don't even think so, yeah. Kyler Gordon yeah. gets there. You, do you ever draft a line with a second grade with a second round grade? Do you ever draft a corner with a second round grade? Yeah, I mean, if the back? positional value and ceiling is high enough, like a yeah. Tariq well, I guess Bowen, the, yeah. but maybe like yeah. Kyler Gordon, maybe uh, I, I don't have Elon Musk. Carry on Winfrey. Carry on Winfrey I can see makes that. sense. I, I, yeah, I run stuff. Right? I, I, there I have like been rumblings lately, and I mean like the last 48 hours that Travis Jones is a first rounder. Hmm. I, I yeah. like that as a pick there too. I don't hate that. I really don't. I have him behind Winfrey, but I I, I I do like him. I go Winfrey Jones, and then I think there's a fairly big drop off. I maybe Fedarian Mathis. Yeah, uh, I've been I've been a Perry on Winfrey stand since before the season though. I've always loved him. He's great. Yeah, I, I don't know. I I still see him as a second rounder. I think uh, De- Devontae White's going to fall into the late into the twenties. And I think there's a big enough gap that if you want a guy like Perry on Winfrey, you'll just have to values in the teens. Devontae yeah. Wyatt, he's that good. I, I could see him at 17. I could see him at 17 in the Chargers. That's the pick that I have Honestly, no clue where they're going. my best bet at 19 for the Saints is Jordan Davis. I think we go receiver well, in Davis because Penning doesn't get there. I see I Davis at Before we resume our regularly scheduled program and uh, Bryce getting into whatever he was going to say about Trevor Penning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Anything that I may have said or implied in the introductions, I don't know. Purely speculation. Again, I don't know. Uh, Don't know that much about the draft. Need to make people laugh. That's how I pay the bills around here. Again, I don't know. And if you or someone you know was affected by things that I may have said or implied, again, I do not know. Like the draft, I don't know about these people's personal lives. I just know that Yestin is Canadian, but living in Canada, he is British. Uh, And I know Theo's a pretty great guy. That's about it. Bryce also has the best Instagram in the world. Uh, That's all I know. I know nothing about Tolfa. And Garrett, I know even less about. (laughs) Uh, And yeah, (laughs) the floor is yours, Bryce. Just about to say, I know one thing I know about Trevor Penning is that dude blows that tackle. There's nothing that screams, you know, top 15, top 20 pick like he's about to be drafted. He's a second he round guard, bro. Yeah, he does nothing well. He's just aggressive. Him. Yeah, he's I was big say, and aggressive. Yeah, it's like that meme is like he's got that dog in him, which is true, but like he's also extremely. He gets aggressive. beat a lot. He's gonna go well, I think Tyler play Smith play. is better than him. Tyler mm-hmm. Smith from Tulsa is the aggression in him in a little bit of a smaller frame, which makes him guard tackle capable, and he was great at holding the edge at Tulsa. And worst case scenario, you get a great guard. So if, if, I don't know. I mean, I'm a Saints fan. I, I, I need a tackle at 16 or 19, but I, I don't think there's going to be anyone worth the value there, which is yeah, why no I think Jordan Davis and like Jameson Williams or Traylon Burke, George Pickens makes more sense. If Penning starts next year, I think he leads the NFL in penalties. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel safe about that bet because as soon as he gets beat, he, he's holding, he's throwing the defender down. Connor Williams, you ever watch him? From the Cowboys, mm-hmm. that's him, and he's a guard. He used to be a tackle in college. I mean, that's this is how it goes. Yeah, I think like Penning's going to have to play guard, but then I don't know. I I don't know how quick that transition will be for him because I, I think he's mostly just relying on physical does. tools. And he played at Northern Iowa. He's not technically or intellectually refined for the NFL. Mm-hmm. It's kind of crazy, man. You got Equanu, Neil, and Cross, who arguably could be interchangeable, and then no one. Then it's a big drop off after that. Mm-hmm. I'm not. Like, a big I might Ryman have fan. Bernard Raymond over him. I I'm not a big Ryman fan. I mean, honestly, I think there's great second round value with Penning and Tyler Smith, and I like Sean Ryan. Um, Kenyon Green, Kenyon Green. 
So Zion Johnson, even. Yeah, Zion like Johnson's a, a first rounder. I think I have fourteen to the Ravens sounds great. I think I, I think seventeen to the Chargers. Chargers, that's good. that's another good spot. Seventeen mm-hmm. to the Chargers, fourteen to the Ravens. I mean, he's a teens player. He, he is, he's he's nasty, and he's a good good leader in the locker room. Yeah, that that's someone he'll he'll show up next year and be like a top five interior lineman in the league, yeah. and everyone will be like, "How did this happen? How did he fall?" He's nasty. I'm a big Kenyon Green fan too. I do like him. I, I, he used to be way higher up the board. I mean, I feel like he's it's athleticism, man. He had a bad yeah. combine, whatever. Yeah, I mean, when we're, we're gonna people, I, I people just are starting. I mean, the combine's a great way to showcase and see these prospects. But I mean, if I have to watch one more John Ross get dropped at, drafted at nine, one more uh, Henry Ruggs get drafted because they ran a four, two at the combine. That's great, man. I mean, like, that's great that you're a 10th of a second faster over the, over four tenths of a football field, you know, but like, are you really better at football? You know, and yeah. you have so like, you have like DK Metcalf there. dropping the second yeah. round because his three cone time is bad. Like, yeah, on. dude. I mean, the dude is a physical freak. And you got guys like Andy Isabella going in front of him because he's well, fast. And the then combine. there are the Jamison Williams of the world and the Jalen Waddles of the world who are great receivers and happen to be blazing fast. Yeah, exactly. Jamison exactly. Williams is my wide receiver one. And I think him and Garrett Wilson are the same caliber of. C.D. Lamb coming out of the draft and Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle coming out of the draft. We don't talk about that enough. Garrett Wilson and Jamison Williams are legit prospects. I think I, I, I love wide Jameson. receiver one in this draft can be interchangeable between, you know, Jamison Williams, like you said, Drake London and uh, Garrett Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. Jamison Williams has some drop issues that I, I'd like to see him work through. Um he dropped a lot of easy passes, and he, he's special after the catch. So I think most of it is is just him looking downfield to make a play but before yeah. securing the catch, which I think could definitely be worked on right away. But there are times where these young receivers have drop issues to start their career, and it just builds a mental wall in their head that they're not able to get past. I mean, the only one I'm that dear. doesn't have a big issue, a big like drop issue, a big athleticism issue, a big injury issue is Garrett Wilson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's the I, for me, he's the clear cut number one. But when I look at Jamison Williams, he reminds me of, of receivers in two previous classes a lot, and that is Jerry Judy. And I'm not going to put the bad juju on him, but he gives off some big J- Jalen Rager vibes. Mm-hmm. And that versatility. And yeah, I mean, Rager was supposed to be great. He flew up boards. The difference was he didn't tear his ACL, and he his Williams receiver has, class wasn't has size good. though. Yeah, Williams is, is bigger than most people give him credit for. I was doing a scouting and I was like, I was like, you know, he looks kind of small, you know, when he's running against these yeah. SEC corners sometimes. And you pull up his profile, and you're like, oh my God, this guy's six foot. Six two, two one really nine. Yeah, that's yeah. that's he's taller than Garrett Wilson, I think. Any I mean well, Garrett Wilson's you like know, Pickens is six three. Yeah, yeah Pickens, Pickens is, is like big, six yeah. three, two hundred, like built. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. no Drake London. Drake London is an absolute monster. Drake London is a dog. Yeah. Uh, dude, that did anyone see that video of him like working out the other day? He ran that fade route and went up. Dude, he he, he looks like Megatron. Like that was the biggest human I've ever he, seen. He reminds dude, me like, of I Megatron. Like he plays like that. He's he's honestly a combination of Megatron and um T Higgins to me. I see Mike Evans and yeah, and Mike and Evans is another lot. common one. Uh-huh. Yeah, he, no, like, Drake rep- London. Who's wide receiver four? I have Burks at wide receiver four. Same. Receivers coming out of his high school mm-hmm. class. I mean, character concerns have always been there, but even and when he was on the field, he was all right. You know, he could stay on the field. So it was the, a top uh, ten lock before he tore his ACL. Yeah, but the the raw potential has always been there. It's just will that overshadow the injuries, the character concerns in a class like yeah. this? You know, I mean, he's getting pushed down by his own self, and then everyone else is is lifting their own stock at the same time. Yeah. So. I just don't see him making it to the second. I don't. With the need for receivers because of the value, you get the fifth-year option, and you're taking a chance, a first-round pick on someone who could be top 10 at a valuable position. You guys want to be mad with him at 16. You guys want the good question or the question that will spark more of a conversation? Do the good one first. The latter. Talk after. Okay. okay. I was going to say get the good one out of the way and then just – 
watch it delve into absolute Neanderthalism. Yes. That's the second Let's one. Do that. Absolute mayhem. Yeah. All right. So the second one was besides not Hutchinson, not Thibodeau, none of the quarterbacks, and not Trayvon Walker. Who's going to be the player 15 years from now when they get drafted in the first round? We're like, why didn't they go number one? Kyle Hamilton, Kyle Hamilton, Kyle Hamilton. That's a good one. Mm. I like sauce here with this one. We said no corners, though. Oh, did he say no corners? Yeah. Oh, no, oh, no, no quarterbacks. Cool. Corners okay. are fine. QBs. Uh, honestly, I My think Jor- Jordan Davis is good for like 10 years, like nine all pros, like just eating blocks in the middle of the defense. He's nasty. This is hard. Devin Lloyd. Sweet yeah, I, can, I considered him for, for my time. I just – I think about days. positional value. And yeah, if I'm it's... being honest, I think – it could be Jermaine Johnson. Mm. I'm a That's really I've heard Jermaine a lot Johnson about Jermaine fan. going top four. I did a scouting report on him and I watched a couple games of his film and I even watched one from Georgia just to see where he's come. I mean, he's just a stud. Like he's 10 sacks. He's good for 10 every year. He's good for 60 plus tackles. Like he's He's all around. He's a good athlete. He's good at everything. I, I I love Jermaine Johnson. I think he has that potential. I think Garrett Wilson is also a fair answer. Garrett Wilson, I can definitely see if he's in the right system. The dude's just a weapon. So mm-hmm. I can talk about the receivers all day. I did all my scouting reports on them, and I, I love the entire class. They're all so different, you know. Just honestly, it's gonna it might come down to even team needs about how this how it should be. Stingley, yeah. Yeah, I want. I, I'd want to say Stingley. I mean, I could, I could, could say Hamilton, but honestly, just the usage for safeties in the NFL today, it's just. I just don't think it's going to get that same value out of the pick long term, like you might out of a guy like Stingley. Like a lockdown corner for five to six is worth more to a team than a top five, top six safety over a ten year period. It's. Just I the think, value of having an elite lockdown corner who can go toe to toe with any receiver in the league is it's when, invaluable. When you look at Kyle Hamilton and Jordan Davis, they're unicorns at odd positions, so they're yeah, oddities. Yeah. So I think they're fair answers, but value is big here, and yeah. that's why I went with Johnson. Ed. Yeah. I like the Kobe Dean a lot. I know he's undersized, but like you watch that guy play, and you're like, that dude is a field general. general. I mean, he's on. Top he reminds of me of, of Demario Davis. Yeah, I mean. The way he controlled that defense, I mean, this guy could, you know, and he might just play with that chip on his shoulder because he's undersized. Like, I really, really like him. One guy that I think has all the potential in the world, maybe not top five pick because he is a linebacker, but if the right team lands with Brian Asamoah from Oklahoma, if you guys have done any research on him, he's a six one six two linebacker ridiculous athlete like he's like Quan Alexander on coke he's he's ridiculous he has met with the Saints in person three times all within like four weeks leading up to the final in-person meeting date so like a Dennis Allen defense would be gross if he could develop if he could go to the Giants in the second and develop with Wink Martindale turn him into a Patrick McQueen or Patrick Queen on crack like <laughs> awesome was crazy yeah. What a comp. He's Patrick Queen on crack. Dude, yeah. I, you, you said that, and I just you gave me PTSD, a prospect I've never heard of going in the first round of the Saints. The last time that happened was, oh, last year when they drafted Peyton Turner. Ooh, I'm hearing um, big things about Logan Holt at 23 to the Cardinals. I like Boye Mafe there a lot. Boye Mafe there or um, someone like Sky Moore would be really dynamic in that. They need to go corner here. Team. I Order think I if see, Kyrie the Lewis there, over, you can't yeah. not. But if if it's between like Kyler Gordon and Logan Hall, I, I what I've heard is that lo- they are enamored with Logan Hall. They think he's a better Peyton Turner. I disagree though, because Peyton Turner is the best edge rusher in the league. But that's a different just podcast. Just count me on, count me out on that one. Count me out. <laughs> He's been yeah. We're just that fighting one now because we got Davenport time. and Cam Jordan, two 10 yeah. plus sack edge rushers. We're going to make it three, maybe four. Let's take an edge rusher this year. 
You know, why, two, why not? Let's take why two not? in the first. Why not? Let's let Charles no, Cross come on. You the guys, you, y'all just watch. Just... We're going Tyler Linderbaum and Trey McBride at 16 and 19. Oh, my God, dude. It will happen. Don't, the Saints would. Don't say that. Please. But honestly, I if they did take They're going to draft Malik Willis said 16. I wouldn't I would hate that. that. No. <laughs> <laughs> if they took Linderbaum and McBride, I would honestly trust it because I just have – all the faith in the world in Mickey Loomis, like that he knows what he's doing. Oh, yeah. Go no some random man, wide receiver. I'm thinking Pickens at 16 or 19 could be the surprise. Uh, might be a damn receiver. Be, mm-hmm. And if the value matches up, I mean, Dennis out or uh, Mickey Loomis said, we're going to get three first rounders with our top 49 picks. He said, like, that. we're going to get that three is... players with a first round pick, first round grade or a top 32 grade. Yeah. But he also had a first round grade on Peyton Turner. So my fingers crossed, man. I, I mean, I but have all the faith in the world. The I, salary cap matters. I, 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 I trust but... in Peyton Turner, though, because he he is the one who has the vision. It is whatever, though. We just need – like, the fans need a receiver. Desperately. Desperately. Yeah. I mean, Jameis needs a receiver. Mike Thomas is great. Deontay Harris I love. But you need another guy in that room on Did a we cheap see deal. what Jameis was saying about bouncing back? He was like, if I come back the same as when I left, I failed. I need to come back better. And I was just like, oh, that's my quarterback. Yeah, I, line. Oh, Jameis was like Josh o- Allen almost in the be. MVP conversation last oh. year. I was actually loving Jameis last year. Yeah, Jameis yeah, is the best. He's just, his personality is like, you can't not love him. Yeah, I mean, great for the locker room, great for the locker room. He might be my favorite NFL quarterback to watch ever because there's just, something awesome happens every time he drops back. <laughs> From he an outside perspective, awesome. yes. About yeah. 25% of that time, I'm really pissed about it as a Saints fan, but it's still kind of funny. Yeah, yeah there's so got to be a lot of like no, 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 yes. With, with yeah, Davis. yeah. Oh, it's an emotional roller coaster. Dude, especially after we're going to be a defensive powerhouse this year. Like, I, I guess – a kind of good question is outside of the Saints community, because obviously that's where I'm most in touch with. Is the Saints defense being talked about as top five? I haven't right. heard it as top no. five, but I I don't hear a lot of top the Saints ten. at all. It's yeah, yeah, it's disgusting to me. I mean, they're top it's three. It's top units, five. Right? It, yeah, like, I, I mean, like it, it's almost you go through the depth chart and it's almost flawless on defense. Here we we have players and talent at every position. You got Jordan and Davenport at, on the edge with Peyton Turner, David Onyemata, Shai Tuttle, Demario Davis, Pete Warner. He would be a really good pick. And he can play corner too. He's six. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I, I think the energy. Saints can win the division and that's why I don't think they're going to take a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I really like that. Yeah. I mean, they have any Dalton on the roster. 